Before we go any forward, let's take a moment to recap whatever we have seen so far in the last 10 videos, alright? Okay, let us begin. We saw that among the two rival theories of light, it was the Dutchman's wave model that was successfully able to explain the refraction of light, predicting that light went slower in the denser medium. We then accepted that light is a wave and went deep into some interesting features of waves. We talked about the interference of waves. Unlike particles, two waves don't just bounce off each other, but they meet up and form a nice pattern. A pattern where some places we get the maximas, where the two waves construct each other, the constructive interference, and places where they kill each other, a minima, destructive interference. We worked out the conditions in terms of path differences. If the path difference between the two coherent wave sources is an integral multiple of lambda, we get construction. If it's odd multiples of lambda by 2, we get destruction. We could also look in terms of phase differences as well, since a lambda path difference corresponds to 2 pi phase difference. For construction, we would need an integral multiples of 2 pi, and for destruction, we would require odd multiples of pi. If the two waves have same amplitude, then during construction, the amplitude doubles, but the intensity becomes four times, and in destruction, they completely destroy each other, giving you zero intensity. And this is where Mother Nature takes the energy from the two sources and redistributes them to give us a wonderful interference pattern. You have to inhale this. You have to digest this. You have to process this. This forms the basis and the groundwork for all of the wave optics. It is eminent that you make this part of your culture and these conditions must be on your fingertips. We then went ahead and learned another cool wave property, namely diffraction. Again, Unlike stream of particles, which would get narrower and narrower with smaller openings, we saw that waves have the ability to bend around sharp corners and spread out. And Huygen explained that this bending effect was due to the fact that in a small opening, only a few Huygen sources survive. And as the opening narrows and approaches zero, only one Huygen source would survive and give you a perfect spherical wave, giving you perfect diffraction. And finally, we saw this in action when Thomas Young used his infamous double slit setup, where he used one source and then in front of it puts two slits, creating two Huygen sources and getting an interference pattern. And then we work out the details. Here are the key points which I want to highlight. The path difference between the two sources when they meet at any point on the screen, making an angle theta with the axis, is always d sine theta, which we approximate to just d theta. And then we use the maxima and the minima conditions, which I ask you to keep on your fingertips, to find the angles at which we get maximas and the minimas. And once we have the angles for the constructions and destructions, if you ever want to convert from the angular distance to the linear distance on the screen, we use trigonometry and just multiply the angle with the screen distance and bang! We get linear distances from the center of the screen. And then we defined fringe width linearly, which is the distance between any two consecutive maximas or minimas, and you can see it turns out to be lambda into d divided by d. And Mr. Young used this for the very first time to calculate the wavelength of light and putting the final nail into the coffin of the particle model. And this is what he must have seen. This is what an interference pattern looks like. This is the energy distribu redistribution I have been always talking about. Here are the four times high, bright, intense maximas, and here are almost zero minimas. And each minima you look at, remember that light plus light is giving you darkness. And this can only happen in waves.
so remember light is a wave guys light is a wave